Edward Grieg was born on June 15, 1843. Though he had constant struggles with friends dying and health problems throughout his life, he looked to the positive side and pushed forward to become one of the most famous and widely recognized composers of the 19th century. You may have never heard of him, but I highly doubt you haven't heard any of his music. I'm going to play one of these pieces now as we take a look at his life and learn about him. Edward Grieg was born to Alexander and Gisan Hagerup, his wife, on again, June 15, 1843, in Bergen, Norway. His dad, Alexander, was an intelligent man serving as British consul with a little interest in music, but his mother, Gisain, was the parent from whom he received his intense patriotism and love of nature and music. She was an amateur pianist who had learned in Hamburg. When Grieg was five, he began to experiment on the piano. In later years, he commented on this, saying, first a third, then a chord of three notes, then a full chord of four, ending at last with both hands. Oh joy, the combination of five, the chord of the night. The next year, 1849, when little Edward was only six, his mother began to teach him. Greg could play piano, but that in no wise guarantees greatness. Back then, he wanted to become a pastor. That all changed when he was 15. One day, Old Bull, a celebrated violinist, visited Edward's dad's home. Upon hearing that Grieg was a composer, he demanded he hear him play. Grieg remarked on that fateful day by saying, When he heard I composed music, I had to go to the piano. All my entreaties were in vain. I could not now understand what old bull could find at that time in my juvenile pieces, but he was quite serious and talked quietly to my parents. The matter of their discussion was by no means disagreeable to me, for suddenly old bull came to me, shook me in his own way, and said, You are to go to Leipzig and become a musician. Everybody looked at me affectionately, and I understood just one thing, that a good fairy was stroking my cheek and that I was happy. And my good parents! Not one moment's opposition or hesitation. Everything was arranged, and it seemed to me the most natural thing in the world. Indeed, Leipzig Conservatory, now called the University of Music and Theatre Leipzig, this school had been founded in 1843, the year that Edward had been born, but by Mendelssohn, another famous composer, and been taught by Schumann, yet another. Unfortunately, both these men died before Edward got a chance to learn from them. Luckily, there were still great teachers and musicians there. Among these were Ignaz Moscheles, who was a composer and a pianist, G.F. Wenzel, who had been friends with Schumann, and many others. But one challenge for Grieg was the fact that he hated, and always had hated, school. As he can inform from this quote, I have not the least doubt that school developed in me nothing but what was evil and left the good untouched. He had been accused of playing hooky many times throughout his childhood years. He had another, more substantial challenge. In 1860, the year he turned 17, he developed a serious case of piercy, a disease which destroyed his left lung and he never truly recovered from. Despite hating school, Edward went as soon as he could back and graduated in 1862. Two years later, he was engaged to his cousin from his mother's side, Nina Hagerup, though they were not married for another three years for his lack of substantial funds to support a wife. In 1866, Riker Nordruck died, a friend who had been highly influential on Grieg, as we can see from Grieg's quote, Through him, I first learned to know the northern folk tunes and my own nature. Sad about his friend, he composed a famous funeral march. Nina was a singer from whom he got much inspiration for his music as he did with nature. Stephen Buse, a professor at BYU, said that there are some people who think you can't appreciate Grieg without getting a sense for Norwegian nature. On the 11th of June, 1867, Nina and Grieg were married and moved to Christiania to live for the next seven years. In December of 1868, Franz Liszt, the eldest Presley of that time, stumbled upon his first violin sonata. He then sent Everett an encouraging letter in which he wrote, It bears witness to a strong talent for composition, a talent that is reflective, inventive, provided with excellent material, and which needs only to follow its own natural inclination to rise to a high rank. Speaking of the Sonata, of course. He then proceeded to invite Edward to meet him in Weimar. Of course he did, and the two 
composers soon became firm friends. Upon Grieg's second visit, Franz Liszt played Grieg's piano concerto in A minor. By sight, exactly how Grieg had intended for it to be played, a feat he didn't think possible. Upon finishing, Liszt said, Keep steadily on, I tell you. You have the capability, and do not let them intimidate you. Edward Grieg wrote of this encouragement to his parents by saying, This final ad admonition was of tremendous importance to me. There was something in it that seemed to give it an air of sanctification. At times when disappointment and bitterness are in store for me, I shall recall his words, and the remembrance of that hour will have a wonderful power to uphold me in days of adversity. In 1869, Edward was devastated at his 13-month-old daughter's death, the only child he would have in his life. After two years, in 1871, he returned to Christiania, and with the assistance of Johann Svensson, created the Musical Society to perform orchestral works. In 1874, Johann Svensson took over when Grieg left, as he had been offered 1,600 crowns a year for the rest of his life. In that very same year, Henrik Ibsen wrote him and asked if he would compose music for a theater ad adaptation of his poem, Peer Gint. In his own words, Dear Mr. Grieg, I am writing to you in connection with a plan that I propose to implement and in which I wish to invite your participation. The plan is this. I intend to adapt Peer Gint, which will soon go into its third printing for a stage performance. Will you compose the music that will be required? I will indicate briefly how I am thinking of arranging the play. He then goes on to explain all of the acts and the way that he would like Edward Grieg to compose the music for them. Edward agreed, and he and Nina moved back to Bergen to accomplish the task. From this job emerged some of his most famous works, which you have undoubtedly heard of, but which you did not know who composed them. These include Morning Mood, and in the Hall of the Mountain King. In 1896, he composed Wedding Day at Trollhagen, a tribute to his marriage. For the next few years, he continued to compose and was showered with awards, such as being a member of the Swedish Academy of Music in 1872, corresponding member of the Musical Academy at Leiden in 1883, member of the French Academy of Fine Arts in 1890, doctor a degree from the University of Cambridge in 1893 at the same time as Tchaikovsky and some others, and in 1906, the Legion of Honor. He did many things in the time that he got those awards. In 1885, he built a villa and called it Trolltagen. Trolled meaning sprite or brownie, and hagen meaning heap or hill. This would be his home for the rest of his life and is a tourist attraction today. On September 4th, 1907, Grieg's fulfilling life ended from heart disease. Upon walking into the hospital he would soon die in, he said the words, This, then, is the end. He was cremated by his own request, and the urn with his ashes was placed inside a grotto visible on a cliff near Trollhagen. The grotto was then sealed with a slab inscribed, Edward Grieg. The funeral was held on September 9th, 40,000 people crowding the streets in sorrowful tribute to him. Grieg has, and will always be, an important part of the history of our civilization, and him and his music will continue to have a special place in our hearts.